Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ain Shafinas binti Muhammad Tajuddin. My meet number is 261932. Our group uh, choose a uh, economic scholar about Muhammad Baqir Al Said. Today I will present about introduction of Muhammad Baqir Al Said. Islamic economy have a met every attempt to explain their theoretical essence of Islamic approach. The concept of Islamic economy as a discipline is essential to understand the nature, topic, approach and scope. In conceiving Islamic economy, the scholars have a proposed various concept of Islamic economy that reflects their context and point of view. Al-Sad was born in Kazimia, Iraq on 1 March 1935 and has written several books including Iqtisaduna. His work in various degree has influenced the information and development of Islamic economy as a system and as a body of knowledge. Also, his freedom uh, of thought is seen as one of the reason many scholars were drawn to research and discuss his work. This assignment aims to analyze this uh, history and growth of the well-known Islamic economist Muhammad Baki Al-Sad. Then, other aim is to learn more about the context uh, of Islamic economic Muhammad Bakir al-Said and his life history. Alternatively, to research in economic context, the popular publication or pamphlet published by this person uh, and contribution to knowledge of our theory. Lastly, the aim is uh, to describe Islamic economic uh, problem from the perspective of Muhammad Bakir al-Said figure and its solution. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Rada Binti Ahmad, matric number 265201. Today, our group would like to present about Muhammad Bakir Al-Sad. First and all, I would like to thank a million to Dr. Zairi, Bezainol for giving us uh, this opportunity to have this assignment. With the assignment, we can get a lot of information about Muhammad Bakir Al-Sad, uh, which is one of the notable Muslim researcher in economic. Now, I will share a little bit about his background. Muhammad Bakir Al-Sad is one of the notable scholars in Islamic economics. He was born in Kazmi, Iraq, in 1st March 1935. He was an Shiraki Shia cleric, jurist, Philosopher and he has written a lot of books such as Iqtisadina, Falsafatuna, Bengla Rabil fi Islam. His intellectual has inspired a lot of economics nowadays. Although Muhammad Bakir Asad came from a traditional Ramad background and had no formal training in Islamic work, in Islamic modern discipline, his work cannot be underestimated. Besides that, Asad also studied about philosophy, economic, logic, ethics, exegesis of the Quran and history. He counts as the founder of Indectic Logic in the Islamic Seminary. As Said Bak studied and discussed different material for about 16 hours a day of the course of his 17 to 18 years spent study. He was being quoted as saying that, I am studying as much as numerous study students today. It is reported that he was a mujtahid expert in fiqh when he was he at his maturity, approximately about 15 years old. He became mujtahid in the mid-1970s and in the early 1990s, he published his own collection of fatwa edits in Judependence known as Risala Amaliyah, which is called Al-Suratu Al-Mustaqim, The Straight Path. They are signaling his wish to be recognized as Marji Taklid, an authority for religious emulation. Asad was the author of many published books. The most important of his monumental fourth volume is Clopedia of Imam Al-Mahdi, who is believed to have gone into the Al-Qulatlation in AD 870-74. And his massive work and independence titled Ma Waro Al Fik. What is independence of which more than 10 volumes has been published? That's all from me. 
hopefully you all can enjoy the presentation and thank you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Anishaira binti Rasdin, matric number 264807. I'm going to present our thought and theory in economic about of Basir Sad. Basir Sad divide the economic into two aspects, which is economic science and economic doctrine. Economic science explains about economic life, events, and its phenomenon. Event explain about the linking between those which uh, general causes and factor which involve. The economic doctrines explain the way society prefers to follow in its economic life and its practical solution. What separates these two aspects is uh, ideology of social justice. This theory is based on satisfied, unsatisfied basic outside on Marxism economic theory, where defined it also into two aspects which is Maxis science and Maxis creed. Maxis history materialism. This history materialism failed to discharge its scientific function and in its analysis where it is does not explain the law of human societies, then the whole structure of Maxis creed will disintegrate disintegrate as it attribute on the historical materialism. Moreover, uh, Basir Al-Sad said that for every social and or history event, there are many factors involved. This include social, political, economy, culture, and psychology. Therefore, the interpretation of history in terms of single factor does not stand the test of reason and science. In which to clear this argument of historical materialism, Basir al sad used aspect of psychology, philosophy, and scientific, also the ideology, uh, Marxism, uh, which include religion, uh, philosophy, science, and law of value, primitive communist, uh, slave social, a society, feudal uh, society, and emergence of capital science. Okay, first about the philosophic argument. This argument based on the principle cause and factor, where nothing happened by chance without cause. Basir al Sad said, just man's mind developed from the result of experiments, and this consequently led to development of the entire society. In this way, Sad offer alternative possibilities to explain history where it's considered the justification of his possibility from the law causes and consequences believed by Marxism. Uh, next is psychological argument. This argument is rise from Marxism thought in human life resulting from phenomenon and forming with certain com communities. But he means that social phenomena have more domain than thought. But to uh, Basir al Sad, humans use language to communicate ideas to each other, and humans think we can think without communication, where they are capable of thinking and reflect. Men can distinguish and change the reality that already exists. So, to Basir al Sad, he refused the psychological argument of Marxism according to which thought cannot be the, ca uh, cannot be the cause of any social phenomenon. Next is scientific argument. Some think that any explanation of hypothesis reach the scientific level only occur when scientific evidence can approve it. And it's only possible explain about phenomenon and define the possibilities of other explanation, such as explanation is probably in uh, can be uh, found in physical science but not in social science. Next is about Marxist concept of ideology. According to Marxism, ideology is based on religion, 
uh, philosophy or science which has no history of its own. So, he next used ideology to back up his theory, which is religion, philosophy, science, law of value, primitive communist, slave society, feudal society, and emergence of capital society. First, religion. Basir al Sad argued that religion cannot uh, can be considered as the creation if the religion can be considered as the creation of uh, the ruling class, then there should be no issue to oppose decision practice on usury, which is uh, usury. Similar, similarly, if religion can be considered an ideology, there will be no bully. And bully just should not be accepted by the class suppressed and not suppressed where they uh, there. Uh, in social class, they are rich and poor. Philosophy. Next is philosophy. Basir also admit that relationship between philosophy and uh, productive uh, power is involved in economy. However, Marxism admit philosophy as the only cause in economy. So, uh, their thought is opposite from each other. Next, about science ideology. Community need invention and discover. So, uh, this is not possible to interpret history and leg legitimate progress. Uh, Sartre admit the relationship between scientific and economic progress. Uh, economic cause as the main cause behind the scientific progress. And according to him, all people have existed similarly in the way of production except in modern technology. For example, a group working in agriculture and handicraft. Even technology uh, exists in both uh, work, but they were uh, different in scientific progress. Next is Marxist, Marxist law of value. According to Basir al Sad, work is not the basis of exchange value. He thinks that two people can make two different exchange value from the same commodity, uh, the same over time because uh, different in their mental ability, the, uh, where uh, someone desires to excel uh, from other people and kind of feeling they have in their mind about how it's work. So, Basir also thinks that one's need affect the constitution of exchange value to a degree commodity use and extent to which it meets. He concludes that human collective desire is a common factor between the two things, not the world. To produce the, uh, the world value, exchange of value. Next is primitive communists. Basir al Sad argued that it is not an economic factor which was responsible for the equal distribution of food in these so societies, but the human nature which was not allow them to make others suffer. Where in this primitive communist, every people are uh, in the same class, no poor and no rich. Next is a uh, slave society. Marxism uh, explained that politic factor is the major than the, uh, than the, res than the economic factor. This failed to explain why those masters were provide the opportunity of enslaving the other even communist society claim the equality of its people. Uh, based on uh, accord, uh, based on Basir al Sad, human nature lead to man's order. Human nature love comfort and leisure, and human definitely choose the less difficult one. Thus. And slave method provide him a better guarantee of uh, comfort and leisure. Feudal society. The transmission is voluntary action on the part of uh, parties, must, master class, and no revolution. It is not the desired result of productive power development. For instance, Agriculture and handicraft found in the continuous slave order in feudal system. Then it will be opposite with uh, Marxism historical materialist, where the modes of production change while the 
uh, social form remain unchanged as in primit uh, primary social society. If the society change, while well, as the mode of production remain constant as in uh, feudal society. Next is emergence of capital capitalist society. Marxists say that the reason behind the primary capital accumulate and the exist of capital class historical was the power of usurpation usurp and subjection, where it, uh, the capitalist society itself arisen not economic by nature. So by this, Marx demolish his own historical logic and admit the class formation does not exist in economic basis. Next is the, uh, the second theory for Marxist, Marxism is Max, uh, Marxism creed. Marxism creed uh, defined into two, which is socialist and communist. First, socialist. Basel also argued that class composition is not a result of economic factor and the position of private property only. As many class composition has uh, exist in history, such as military, political, religious, and religious basis. So history is not appropriate when the division of society make classes disappear by having only private property. But it is also possible that class composition can occur in social uh, socialist uh, societies on other grounds. This is because the economic distribution in a social country is based on what one's job is, where it shows someone's capability on work, the efficiency, nature of work, and degree of difficulties. But this excludes workers that are already talented with genius and intelligence, where uh, such a difference exists. The surplus in economy can be offset by the talent of the intelligence worker and justifies their wages. This can be said that pleasure and power heavily on politic power at socialist level. Next is uh, communist, communism. He convinced that two pillars which are wiping the private ownership in field of capitalism production and field of consumption where homogenize the production and all consumer goods. Basil also said this pillar never exists. If there is if there is just the result thousands of innocent people losing their life eventuate this pillar. Second, the eliminate uh, political authority and finally free the society from hold of government. But when it's a cure, class gradually change from society to communist. However, this condition is a contradiction with the law of dialectical law uh, because uh, Basir al-Sad said the government itself used politics to defend themselves. Even in communist its practice, itself needs to community to make distribution work in any related, related problems. Okay, now we move to the capitalist economy. The nature of capitalist economy. Basir also said that in capitalist economy, there are two uh, means among the economies, which is scientific and doctrinal aspect. First, the scientific aspect of economic life runs in according with some nature law, which governs all economic enti entities of society. Thus, it is the job of economists to discover such laws to explain the differences society, uh, in economic phenomenon and the event in human life. Second, the doc doctrinal aspect. This uh, natural law is the guarantee of human happiness and provides them in maintenance of a free environment and all members of community enjoy the freedom of ownership and free from exploitation and use, free to use. The nature law is divided into two, first similar to scientific law but do not show link with the human will like general law of limitation and the law of increasing production. And the second one is linking with the will of men like the law of supply and demand and law of wages. 
the second time of law uh, the second type of law can change the society in respect of factor which determine their impulses of character and practical value in life for example the law of wages if the wages increase supply increase due to the community wanted to improve their living standard okay capitalist doctrine every individual has the full freedom to pursue any approach and take up any path for inquiring the enlarging and multiplying their wealth in accordance with his personal interest and benefit such doctrine cultivates in every individual a deep consciousness and responsibility towards the society and its interests and all this character future according to such are present in islamic economic doctrine okay next is capitalist freedom that divided into three kind of freedom first freedom is an instrument to ensure good and welfare demands by society second freedom causes growth of production and third freedom is the real expression of human dignity freedom ensure good and welfare of society if one's lacking moral and spiritual value consequences during the past history it will be likely to show in the future in this way can be concluded humanity suffered terribly at hand of capitalism where freedom of moral emptiness and spiritual was vacuumed it is not possible to create public interest without the moral and spiritual values and the second one is freedom cause growth of production. Basir al Sad said there are two mistakes for the result, which is a project unit in capitalist society not similar, operating with equal degree of competence but are different in terms of size and competence. But in this way, the strong project will crush the weak one. Uh, uh, it's same uh, like the rich one will crush the poor one where all the lead monopolization system the second mistake is increasing in production level that is not a guarantee of welfare and happiness of society where its increased production is proper distribution with uh, which constitute constitute the entire impression of general general social welfare okay Lastly, freedom is the real expression of human dignity, where Basir al Saad classified freedom into two kinds, which is natural freedom and social freedom. Natural freedom occurs by nature, it is essential with element of human dignity, but has no doctrinal character. It's given by God and not a gift provid provided by any doctrine. Meanwhile, social freedom is given by the social system in which a person lives. This freedom led an individual within the scope of his possibility and opportunity to purchase a certain commodity, which an individual from society does, does certain work, and this society providing individuals all means and conditions required for it. So, this does not let anyone apply an individual freedom to purchase anything. Second, formal social freedom, which a social and individual a society and individual within the scope of his possibility of uh, an opportunity use any method to purchase a certain commodity if he possess to uh, buy something he can freely buy it if uh, okay. Basel thought also provide three ways to justify the restraint and pressure on formal society freedom uh, so, so, social freedom first Justify as historical necessity. As Marxism historical material. And the second, belief in high authority which has the right to govern the whole human race such as religion. Third, limitation and restraint appear as a result of one's conscience which order human being moral value and define the limits. However, the capitalism does not believe in historical material and also show no connection with religions or consigns. 
So Basir al Sad concluded that to solve this, the wealthy can work as they want to provide formal social freedom. In this way, it gives a better life for the weaker people, or the rich cannot act as their free will, but this opposes. Uh, this op this also opposite with the formal social freedom principle. Thus, Basir al Sad concluded that this concept of freedom is incomplete in capitalism. So, regarding to this prince, uh, conception of freedom, Basir al Sad argued that it is not the social freedom but the natural freedom which is the real expression of human dignity. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi, my name is Muhammad Mujahid Mustaqim bin Ibrahim And my number metric is 265192 Okay, um, from publication of Muhammad Bakir Asadri He has published two books in his uh, life So the first one is Iqisaduna And the second one is Falsafatuna Okay about the Iqisaduna, the word derived from the Arabic word, which means um, um, our economy. Here, Asadri utilized legitimate hukum, which is decision, to give a financial way of thinking from Islamic. Uh, this book is translated in English by Iranian government in 1982. This book composed three headlining which the first one is principle and strategy which um, we can determine as a methods and second one distribution and element of creation the last one distribution and equity which is justice this book comprise three section um, which the first two section um, the Islam have an answer on the issue that in advanced world which Islamic come with option in contrast to both communism and capitalism but in the third one Asadri clarify the Islamic economy origin okay the viewpoint of Muhammad Bakir Asadri from monetary framework he said that it has two angles which are logical viewpoint and another one is doctrinal perspective. The logical part which is from Marxist economy is recorded realism why as it's a doctrinal, doctrinal viewpoint or perspective contains socialism and communism okay, the second book is Falsafatuna um, which derived from Arabic word that has a meaning as uh, our philosophy this book distributed at 1959 and this book also eva evaluate of European way of thinking particularly on communism on communism and capitalism from Islamic perspective. It was focused on common use in Iraq and was written because of development of socialist thought. The presentation of the book discussed about four significant social way of thinking which comprise with socialism, capitalism and communism also Islam. From what we can understand, um, both of the book, the first one, Iqisaduna, discuss about the economy, and the second one, Festivatuna, which discuss about the thinking of ideologies such as socialism, capitalism, communism, and Islam. So we can differentiate. We, we can differentiate between both of the book by the title itself because the, the title itself meaning has 
uh, an impact such as Ikti Saduna which call as economic so this focus on economic but the Fasafah Tuna focus on philosophy Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Dani Irfan bin Muhammad Kahar. My metric number is two six one zero eight six. I will be focusing on the current issue based on Muhammad Bakir Al Saud point of view, based on his writing, which is some for the Islamic economic, and other is his own philosophy. His view on Islamic economy is called Iqtisaduna. And his philosophy is called Falasafuna. Based on his writings, he received various forms of criticism and threats on his life. Though Muhammad Bakir al Saud is not a good example as he was not a Sunni, which literally translated to Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah. His, per- his perspective about the probation of riba was one of the causes was one of the causes that leads him to his own death. As we know that riba is not an Islamic way as it only brings profit to the rich becoming richer and the poor becomes poorer. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, accuses Usuri eaters, payers, Usuri Ushurs and Usuri witnesses he said that they are all the same. Hadith Riwayat Bukhari. As we can see nowadays that nowadays that most of the banking system still uses riba in their daily transaction. For example, we can see that if people go and buy cars, they will go to the bank and the bank will give them loan. And with the loan there comes this interest fee that interest fee is known as riba hi i am amiro rashidin my number is 267547 now i will talk about our recommendation of that issue based on our economic scholar thought which is Muhammad Bakir thought. According to him, all banks should provide the Islamic banking system and should be the main choice for the all Muslim customer because in Islam was for prohibited the interest. If the non-Muslim customer want to use the banking service, the bank can give their choice whether they want to use a conventional or Islamic service. And now today, many conventional banks already have provided Islamic banking system as the service. As a conclusion, on the world of this research, this research about Muhammad Bakir al Saud has given our group a wealth of knowledge on this subject. Muhammad Bakir al Saud was one of the leading scholars of Islamic economy. Muhammad Bakir al Saud is among the earlier contributors of Islamic economy and economy. Al Saud dissertation Iqtisaduna is still recognized in the literature of Islamic economy as a magnum opus and it is considered a pre-required reading in Islamic economic studies. Muhammad Bakir al Said was among the first donors to the Islamic economy. The main focus is to explore the discover ideas and principles uh, based on Islamic sources in Islamic economics. Through this study, the researcher also found the current issue based on Muhammad Bakir al Said's perspective. Conventional banking is still using usury as one of the profit without working. 
Therefore, we can conclude that usury or riba is haram uh, that we must produce based on the Islamic perspective distinguished by Muhammad Baqir al Said. The aim of al Said uh, was above all to develop Islamic economic theory as the foundation of the Islamic economic system. He strongly believed that uh, no Islamic economic science should uh, could be developed without the doctrine of Islamic economy. His greatest goal was to develop certain doctrine until he had carried out empirical study. Hence, his approach reflects his interpretation of, his, of the nature of Islamic economy, which, seek, which seeks to define and apply Islamic economic theory from the key sources of the Quran and Al-Sunnah. Thank you.